It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And the question is, are you ready for some football? It's the Saints and the Bears. And it's coming up next. One of the great venues to watch a game in any sport and one of the best home crowds in any sport, Soldier Field in Chicago. Just a short time ago, this crowd loud enough to shake the foundations of this nearly century-old building. They are ready for football indeed in Chicago as their guys get set to do battle with the New Orleans Saints. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And CD, you look at the Saints in this matchup. It's a relatively balanced offense. The next-gen stats kind of bear that out. What do you think they'll be looking to do in this one? I think it'll be exactly what you just talked about. They'll want to be balanced on offense, which means to them, they'll want everyone involved. See if they can get some one-on-ones in the passing game. Maybe identify some situation where they can swing the ball to the backs in space. Even find some spots where they just want to play some old-fashioned power football. As one of the most successful coaches in the league told us once, the definition of balanced offense, that means you can do what you want when you want to, not necessarily just running it 50% of the time and throwing it the same percentage. tackled just shy of the 25. And here come the Saints for their opening drive. And out will come the leader of this offense, and that, of course, is their signal caller. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way, and he sees himself in an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator say right off the top? He's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. Breeze now on first down. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. Well, they've got man coverage on the outside, and my scouting report on these DBs tells me that they love to take matters in their own hands. They want man coverage, not zone. And there was good coverage there that forced the incompletion. To throw again on second down. Breeze looking again for Thomas, this time complete. And he'll be brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. I think defensively, you're okay with that. And you're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that, you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch. Now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs, and you tend to stall them out when you do that. But I think when they look at their offense, they think to themselves, weapons, weapons everywhere, and they want to move the ball around. They want to spread it to different people. But you absolutely know they want to get this man involved as well, and that's what they just did on that play. So into Bear territory now. This is first and 10 at the 49-yard line. Again, it's Breeze. And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. 
trying to defend the out route there, got the P.I. call. I mean, that's difficult about that one is sometimes you want to make the undercut move and go for the football, and other times you just want to hang on the upfield shoulder and make the tackle. I think he got caught in between and created a foul. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now the first carry for Bush. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. Nice play right there to stop him behind the line. But I want to see how this defense continues to play him here in the first half. Yeah, we know. You know better than I. He has the ability to take over a game. So what do you do? Yeah, I think you have to make sure that you bottle him in at varying levels. Because if you crowd everyone to the line of scrimmage, if he breaks through, it's nothing but room to run. On second and 11 now. Breeze. Throw complete right side to Cooks. Four yards on the completion, and it sets up a third down. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on, because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. Now Breeze on third down. And left side here, it's Graham. And he'll be stopped short of the first down as they rally to tackle him at about the 28. Just a five-yard pickup and it leads to fourth down. We had a perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync, stayed in great communication. And as he dragged across each zone, you see him pointing, communicating. There he is, and they passed him off to each defender. Ended up making a nice play, even though it was complete. Breeze to throw for it on four. He gets it to Cooks. And he'll be out of bounds just Let's inside go. the 25-yard line. And that's a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense, they can't get the stop here. Again, they'll throw with Breeze. There again is Cooks, complete. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. Well, I know from past experience, before you actually play a game, you visualize what's going to happen. And I don't know anyone who doesn't visualize themselves being in the center of what's going on. That's three catches for him here in the early going. He's got to like the way this has started. Absolutely. Three catches on any drive is good. Opening drive, that's a tone setter. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he's able to get this down to the five-yard line before he's out of bounds. A gain of six there on first. Defensively, they better figure something out. Opening drive, he already has four catches. And if you have to figure out how to stop him defensively, that usually means you weaken your defense. That means that now the offense is doing the dictating, and they should have other things open up as well. From the five, second and four. To throw is Breeze. To the end zone, but it's incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. It's been a pretty long opening drive. This will be play number 11 coming up on third down. Now Breeze again. And Charlie will go down back at the 12. And the defense coming through on third down. A loss of seven to bring up four. Let's talk about how teams are so competitively matched, and you just want to make those plays that give you an advantage. How about right here? The difference between letting them score a touchdown versus holding them to a field goal? That's absolutely huge with the play he just made. And you know he hated taking the loss there on third down. now is the field goal unit for New Orleans. And this one is right through. And the Saints are going to take a 3-0 lead. So the opening drive does yield points. Maybe not the seven they wanted, but they'll take the three. Accumulating first downs does not go up on the scoreboard. 
but it does go into the DNA of a team that's trying to establish itself to start a game. That has to feel pretty good for them. They'll take the three. Yeah, they had three first downs and three points. Morstead, the punter, out to kick it off. Hester going to decide against a return, and they will spot this at the 25. So here are the Bears now for their opening drive. And they'll be let out by the man running the show, Charles, their quarterback. It's pretty much become the norm when we see guys come out before a game and go through the route tree with their receivers. I thought it was exciting for us to see the exact same thing happen in practice. He's, not, so, he's so meticulous, isn't he? He really is, and it's not. that tells me it's not just a one-time-a-week thing. They work on it all the time, trying to hone that fine edge. They want to see if they can get in sync and stay in sync in this one. Throwing on first down. McMahon, oh, he's going to take a shot right away. And it is incomplete. Good positioning there downfield to break that one up. But they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Throwing again. McMahon, that'll be caught by Hester. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. If you run an out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. On third and two. McMahon, and that is incomplete. So the defense able to get off the field here on third down. And it's one of the goals of the game. They've got to be effective on passing downs. It's one of the few things defenses chart. How did we do on third down? That's a nice start for them in this one. Here comes the Bears punter now, as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And a fair catch signaled for and taken just outside the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Saints will take over with a first down and 10. New Orleans Saints, they get ready to set up shop for their second drive. They've got a 3-0 lead and the football as they start first and 10. Start on the ground with Bush. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. They'll lose a yard there, and it's second and 11. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness. He's the whole package. And that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. From the gun, it's Breeze. Gets this to a standout receiver, Thomas. The reception good for seven. It's third down. Timing is so important on a route like this because he's going to line up out right then cut straight across the field. I think the ball might have come out a counter two too late because by the time he was able to secure it, not much of a chance to turn it upfield. The Bears bring out an extra defender in the secondary now for third down. Here's Breeze to throw. Flush to his right, and he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. 
We just saw a nice example of why teams often bring in baseball guys to teach quarterbacks how to slide in key situations. You want to protect your franchise guy. Make sure he doesn't get hurt. He did exactly that on that play. A perfect slide to avoid the big hit and pick up a first down. Breeze now on first down. Steps away to his left. And this turns into a nice gain with a slide at the end. Let's go, boys. And the Saints first down. with a football here to begin quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. Shotgun now for Breeze. They'll get this out to Camara. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. A good position to be in here, second and inches. A give left side, Bush shedding the tackle. Oh, a solid stiff arm and some open field. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, New Orleans. A great play there. 30 yards. And the Saints add on to their lead. Well, that is a running back who was not about to go down easily. He fought his way through the contact until the seas opened up for him. And that, in a nutshell, Shows you what this guy is made of. I mean, most guys in the NFL just can't do that. He absorbed the contact, refocused himself, and made a break for the end zone. And you can see the distance traveled there after the initial contact on the next-gen stats. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead grows to 10 nothing. That time, a six-play drive. And a pretty good run there in the end to top it off. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. Now Hester will get a shot. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. Chicago works their way back onto the field here for their second drive of the game. And on the first drive, three and out. And I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. On first down, Peyton, and he'll work this forward for about three at second down. I think they want to start getting back into this game. It behooves them to get better on first down. Yeah, certainly not what they were looking for there out of the opening play of this drive. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Operating from the gun, McMahon. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be corralled right around the 34. 
if you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. And the Saints pressure gets him. Brought down for a sack. That one will set him back nearly 10 yards here on first down of the sack. It seemed like he kept going through those progressions, and I thought he might dump that underneath, but he couldn't get rid of the football in time. And I have to wonder if he was thinking while he was back there, I wish there were a lot less progressions on this play, just someone that I could dump the ball to and get it out of my hands. Back quite a ways here, facing second and 19. Go, go, go. Off play action, McMahon. And pressure coming, and they got him once again. They push him back eight yards that time on second down. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you, and you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability, and a sack resulted. Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. He'll drop this off to Peyton. And they'll bring him down here up at about the 22-yard line. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Rock the ball his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? Here comes the Bears punter now as he'll kick it away for the second time. 46 on his first kick, this one in that neighborhood as well. So possession goes over here on the punt, and possession will switch hands first and 10. Back out onto the field now comes the New Orleans offense. And now last drive so successful with the ground game, ending in a touchdown. Do you stick with that formula? That would be the number one thing you would think of, but so many guys now would look at it and say, we've got them set up so well for play action, now's the time to take a shot. Yeah. But you know, there was a big time coach in the state of Ohio who once said, <laughs> if you throw the ball, if you put it in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. <laughs> he would have kissed it on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Throwing on first down is Breeze. Throw left side complete to Troutman. And he's able to get this one up to his 30 before he's out of bounds. They'll contain him to just four, second down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You're getting better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. And he gets this to the 35. Good for a gain of five. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. Here's Kamara trying to run for it. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it in here. Why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll run it with Bush. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. We've hit the two-minute mark of the first half. 10-0 our score. A 
reminder coming up in a couple of minutes time we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman the coach in our EA Sports studios they'll have a look back at the next gen stats from this first half of action and he takes this one down almost all the way let's to go, the 30. Let's go, let's go. So many times in my career, I've heard coaches talk about completions are one thing. But as long as we're there at the catch and we get guys on the ground, we can live with that. But if you're going to give up 10, 12, 15 yards after the catch, then your defense is going to be in a lot of trouble. On first and 10, here's Breeze. And this is caught inside the five. And out of bounds all the way down at the three. Let's go, boys. Let's go. Great footwork there, Charles, to dot the eye, stay in bounds, get both feet in. He's probably thinking, though, man, I made a catch like that that close to the end zone. I should have scored. Yeah, there's always a regret when you're that close to the goal line. But let's go back to what you talked about before, getting his feet down. Would you say dotting the eye? Mm -hmm. I can cross the T as well. That was... I believe they buzzed down. They're going to take another look at this play. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Now Breeze, and he's got him, it's caught in the end zone, touchdown New Orleans. Jimmy Graham, there to make the grab, and the Saints able to stretch that lead out further. You get down near the goal line, this is where having a sure-handed tight end becomes a luxury, and it pays off big time, especially when the defense sells out against the run, and he finds himself open for an easy touchdown. Extra point attempt here still to come. He's got it, and it's 17-0. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays, and it all culminates in a Saints touchdown. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. Returnable here for Hester. And he will make it to the 20-yard line and no further. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready. The Chicago offense set to get started. They're in a first half that really has not been kind to them. A late opportunity here to maybe make some inroads on this deficit before half. And this drive's going to go a long way towards telling us whether they actually have a chance to come all the way back in this game or not. First down, McMahon, open man here is Gentry. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. When you struggle on offense, you're looking for anything possible to get you going. Sometimes you do it like basketball teams that don't normally press. You put a press on, bring people to life, make them move a little bit quicker. Maybe that'll help them as they head towards the half. First and 10 here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, there's something about narrowing it to a two-score game at half that makes it feel like much less of an obstacle. Oh, he tries to force it in, and it's intercepted. Picked off at the 40. And he will have a first down as they're in the field goal range now at the 30. And unfortunately,
unfortunate sequence there. Try to get points before intermission, but now the interception, and their opponents have a chance to possibly pad their lead. Yeah, they had an opportunity there, and they weren't able to capitalize on it, and that's something that could come back and haunt them later. They're begging their defense now to keep them from scoring before the half ends. Here comes the field general leading his offense back out there for the next possession. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of him. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes, but right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. So after the INT, it's Breeze. Drops this off to Kamara out of the backfield. And he'll be out of bounds, able to get it down to the 25 there. So five yards here, five on the play. And that'll make it second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. From the 25 on second down, Breeze firing quickly here, and that's complete. The Saints going to call the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. Bree's going to throw. Thomas has got it, complete. And the Saints are going to have a first and goal as he's taken down at about the eight-yard line. Now we'll get a quick timeout called by New Orleans, number two, as the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play in this first half. Here's first and goal, and gosh, points here. A chance maybe to put this thing away before halftime. Breeze to throw again. Looking left side, he's got it complete. Touchdown, Saints! From eight yards out, and the Saints continue to pull away here in this first half. That score that they just gave up there, that's a tough one for their defense to swallow because they've had a tough time through the first two quarters. They really were determined to get a stop there. Unable to do so, that makes their comeback hopes that much more difficult. Extra point attempt to follow here. And the lead is now 24. A drive there of just four plays. And it ends with a touchdown for New Orleans. Morstead out now following the touchdown to kick. Now Hester will get a shot. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. Now we get a peek at the captain of this offense heading back out there. In second quarter, they're down big already. He's struggling as well. They've got to find something here. He's got to find something on this drive. And sometimes you take on all that extra pressure on yourself, and maybe you have to disperse it a little bit. Lean on some other people. Lean on your teammates. Find someone who can take the pressure off and get the ball in their hands for a while. Or this, if he doesn't, this is getting out of hand, or it could get worse. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And his throw's going to be incomplete. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. 
He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Nowhere to go here. He lost the football. So we have reached halftime with the visiting Saints out on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everybody, to our abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First things first, let's get a check on the next-gen stats from that first half for the Saints. And their offense has been in top form so far, especially their passing game, as it's helped push them out to this big halftime lead. Meanwhile, for the Bears, they were on the other end of the spectrum in terms of passing efficiency. That's going to need to improve in the second half to come. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. going to see the football first and they trail here as we get back underway to start this second half returnable here for Hester and he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 That's yard it, line we got work. so here's the Bears offense now as they get set to start this third quarter and you have to think Charles down three scores already they need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart, fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone, and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. They'll run on first down. Peyton. And he'll be upended at the 28-yard line. Just a three-yard gain there. 